shifted over the past few years, and this, this sort of unexpected situation we found where <clears throat> sources weren't required to run their control technologies and optimize their use on the, day, the days when they were needed the most. This isn't unique to Maryland. This is happening across a lot of the East. Um, that was a big issue, and we needed to fix that. So this rule does fix that issue. Uh, from my perspective, We've done a very good job in Maryland, but we did have some catching up to do with a couple other states like Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Wisconsin, particularly on the piece of making sure you run your control technology each day and, and focusing on these units that are high emitters, but low capacity peak day units. Um, so this will make us much more consistent with those states that have already taken that step. Um, Pennsylvania, who we're often compared to, does have a rule out, it is less stringent than what we're talking about today, but it is also something. So we do think that this rule will bring us up to, to, to snuff with the other, other states that have, have gone to this, this, this step. Um, finally, the, the last issue, which is really the toughest one we struggled with, which is how to provide the flexibility. And one of the key things we did was, was, was add timing. So um, this is really at the heart of, of our, 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 our inability to fix the, the, the fourth option and the regulation of the floor. But we really, uh, we really were trying to figure out a way to give companies many options to look at and time to make sure that they look at all the options and that, that retirement is an option, but it's sort of the last option. So we really worked hard on this piece. Um, and again, the 2020 extension, that's a long time, is what we're hoping provides companies with the flexibility they need to do the research they need to do to figure out how they're gonna modernize certain pieces of their plants and, and to move forward without plant shutdowns. Um, and again, we, we have an older fleet in Maryland. Many of the units we're talking about were built, you know, 50 years ago. So there is, there's been a lot of modernization, but there's sort of a constant need to do that. So, um, and we do think that all of our, uh, all of the units that don't have the state-of-the-art controls have been and continue to look at these options. Um, I think every single unit has looked at switching to natural gas and adding the SDR technology. And it is a changing energy market. And just as an example, you know, just two years ago in 2012, um, uh, the Chalk Point Unit 2 in the Dickerson plant was announcing a plan to move to, forward with SCRs. Now that has changed, but that's how dynamic the changes are in the energy market right now. So there's a lot that's going to happen over the next five years. And again, we, we do work very closely with our sources and we know that, that, that pretty much everybody is looking at natural gas. It's been an interesting phenomenon over the past few years. The costs have been low, will it stay low? We're all waiting to see. But we know folks are looking at uh, natural gas as an option at all their plants. And again, probably the biggest compromise in this is this 2020 piece. Um, I would have much preferred to keep it at 2018. Um, but as part of a compromise to give everybody the time they need to make the decisions that need to make, uh, we agreed that we can move forward and do it this way with that extension to 2020. And that's it. This is our schedule. Uh, this is really the same schedule we showed earlier. We'd like to have uh, ACAC confirm their, their earlier recommendation that we move ahead today. Uh, then we want to get busy with our process, get it proposed and effective in the early 2015 timeframe. And if we succeed with that, we'll start to see the reductions from the reg as early as the spring of 2015.